Taliban hates office work and misses the days of jihad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I knew this. I knew this. I would. I didn't think I would hear it, but I knew that I. I felt like these people. They're like, "Damn it! Like I miss the good old days. What is this? This is not what we were meant to do." But yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Recently, the Afghanistan Analytics Network, or AAN, a nonprofit research agency, conducted interviews with five former Taliban mujahideen, or you know, guerrilla fighters who quote unquote struggle for Islam, who are now part of the new government. Uh, Sabawun Sahim, Sa- Samin, excuse me, a researcher at AAN, asked the Taliban members how they felt about their victory in securing control of the country. According to some of the members of the Taliban, they are now expressing complaints about the work life that they lead behind a desk after spending their lifetime riding horses in the countryside as jihadists. They find themselves thinking about how to pay rent and are addicted to using social media like Twitter to pass the time. One member said, quote, I'm happy with my job, but I often miss the time of jihad. During that time, every minute of our life counted as worship. We used to live amongst the people, but many of us have now caged ourselves in our offices and palaces, abandoning the simple life. One former fighter named Mansoor also complained about the traffic in Kabul and said that he was robbed of his freedom after the Taliban won. This is (laughs) amazing. This is amazing. (laughs) I have to, I'm going to find, Bill Maher had some, a few good jokes about this. I'm going to try to find it, but go on. No, go no, on. I actually, I, I, if you want to show that, oh. I put the link to the that clip in the show notes. Oh, I cannot. Oh, it, it's HBO, Susie. I know. And if I show that, that would be an immediate copyright strike. So, so I'm then just, what are you going to do? I was just going to find the jokes to see if somebody wrote it somewhere. Oh, wrote it down. And, and, and just read them. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is hilarious because... I I went and I actually went to go read the full report that this analytics uh, nonprofit did. And so I read like the full interviews or that they released with the all the Taliban fighters. And um, it was fascinating. Um, They didn't have anything in common besides the fact that none of them had come from Kabul. um, And they had all joined the Taliban when they were teenagers. Um, and now they were living in Kabul and it was really funny because they all talked about how before they secured control of the country, they had never been to Kabul before. And so they talked about how they had, they believed that Kabul was going to be like evil and grotesque and da da da. But then they found that actually like people are very nice and sometimes they like it better than the village life because people aren't always in your business and they don't care who comes into your house or what you're doing. <laughs> or um, they also talked about how what one fighter said that the people in Kabul are actually more holy because in the village, people do charity or go to the mosque every weekend so that other people will see them doing it. But in Kabul, no one is going to notice if you're doing charity or if you're going to the mosque. Um, So they're saying the people that actually are observing their religious duties in Kabul are more... um, Kabul. 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 Ol. Ol? Yeah, ol. But yeah, go on. Anyways, they're they're actually more religious because they're doing it even though no one in their culture or society is going to notice. And then they also talked about how, Armin, this was fascinating to me. When the first week or the first few weeks in which they took power, one of the Talibs was saying that they, um, they, when women would come to them, like looking for assistance and they basically needing the police, they would run away from the women because they had never what? spoken. They would run away from the women <laughs> because they said that they had never spoken to a strange woman before. What they mean oh is that they had never spoken to a female outside of their family members ever before. 
What? So they, they thought it was a sin to be talking to these women until finally there was a scholar that had to sit down with them and say that you are authorities in this country now. You have to talk to them because you are the authority and you have to enforce the law. So this isn't a sin. You're the police. You can't be running away from women who need your help. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. No. oh that's so funny. And um, all of... Uh, Guys, this, this is bad, by the way, because these people have no idea how to run a country. These people have no idea yeah. how to run a country. And this country needs, you know, management right now. This country yeah. really needs... Oh, I remember no, one no, of no, them was... Go on, go. They also talked about how during the first weeks of their reign, they were like afraid to go outside and they were afraid to go in different areas of the city, not because they were afraid of Americans or drones or Western forces or any of that. They were afraid to go out into the city because they were afraid of seeing women. By the way, these people are, are not afraid of dying. No, like these people, these people are ready to go into battle, hoping to be killed. These people are not afraid of uh, suicide attacks, not afraid of drones, not afraid of bullets, not afraid of active warfare. But they're like they're scared <laughs> shitless, staying in their home because strange women might talk to them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, this is amazing. This is no, no. So here's the thing. There is a like a there's a meme that you see sometimes on ex Muslim Twitter about the this old this like you know classic Dai like his name is Dawa man, and he's from like Birmingham UK so he he's kind of like a weird mix between like a hey, the man them there and then also like Dawa, <laughs> and there's this video of him sobbing he's crying talking about how he doesn't leave oh. the house because he's afraid of seeing sisters in improper hijab oh, and people mock him relentlessly he is shedding real tears on camera <laughs> over being afraid of seeing sisters in improper hijab and then this the reading the, the the interviews with these talibs i was like oh my god this this isn't just this isn't just daba man like this is a real thing like it's like yeah. the all of the talibs are like oh my god i'm terrorized like yeah i've seen i've seen um i've seen because i follow like iranian re very religious iranian youtube channels i've seen people cry over women not having a job more than i can count like men <laughs> But Cry. are they crying yeah. because they're scared to see it? No, these ones, these ones were crying because they were feeling, they're thinking like, well, look what's happening to our woman. Look what mm. is, look the degeneracy that is spreading in our land, right? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So that one, that was a different reason for why they were crying. Oh, by the way, I can't, I can't find the jokes, but more were saying, but I remember one of them and I know I can't say it and I can't make it funny the way he says it. Right. But he was like, he had like different Taliban pictures of in the office trying to work and issuing complaints. And one of the account was like, you try doing accounts pay payable without Jews. So that was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> So and one of and there was another one who was complaining about having to be trained about workplace harassment, even though they have no woman working at yeah, the yeah, office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's good. No, so, can I read some quotes from the Talibs? Oh, oh yes, please. Yes, we have quotes, please. guys. Okay, get ready. Okay. So, um, uh, Huzafia says. Um, <laughs> Life was simple and free during jihad. He was a former sniper. All we had to deal with was making plans for attacks against the enemy and retreating, he said. The people didn't expect much from us, and we had little responsibility towards them. Whereas now, if someone is hungry, he deems us directly responsible for that. The Taliban used to be free of restrictions, but now we sit in one place, behind a desk and a computer, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Life's become so wearisome. You do the same things every day. Being away from the family has only doubled the problem. Oh, yeah, because, like, none of them can afford rent to bring their family in, into the big city. So their families are all in the village still. Oh, wow. So they're away from their wives, and they're seeing Kabul women as well who are wearing less 
a job than the woman that they used to. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Be, there must be suffering a lot. Yes, yeah. yes, I see. I see and then uh, sometimes I miss the jihad life for all the good things it had, said 25-year-old Abdul Nafi. In our ministry, there's little work for me to do. Therefore, I spend most of my time on Twitter. We're connected to a speedy Wi-Fi and internet. Many mujahideen, including me, are addicted to the internet, especially Twitter. <laughs> What is happening? What? This is, this is, are you sure this was, the source of this was not the onion? This is amazing. I know, it's real. The funniest oh thing God. was in, in the, in the Bill Maher clip, when they talk <laughs> about how, um, the, the Taliban is complaining about how, here's the quote, um, uh, in the group, we had a degree of freedom about where to go and where to stay and whether to participate in the war, he said. However, these days, you have to go to the office at 8 a.m. and stay there till 4 p.m. If you don't go, you're considered absent, and the wage for the day is cut for your, from your salary. We're now used to it, but it was especially difficult during the first two or three months. And the funniest thing was during the HBO clip when they said that they were so frustrated over working from 8 till 4. Like, the looks on Bill Mars and his guests' faces, like, that was the most outrageous part of it. <laughs> like, they're, they're upset about working eight to four what the hell like that out of everything that was the most outrageous to us americans like <laughs> you know what you know what people should I, I bet you a lot of americans and other westerners would be like look our lives are actually more miserable than Thank having you. to go <laughs> than having to go to war <laughs> people people who have experienced both office work and fighting in war have preferred war, fighting in war so this is like we're living under such horrible conditions this is how office life is so it's so depressing yeah it yeah, might yeah, actually yeah, yeah. be that depressing i don't know <laughs> so, yeah so like so. It, it goes on and on and one thing that i thought was really interesting is that the um <laughs> yeah, i can feel their pain yeah we can all agree that office we, you know we never thought that we'd have anything in common with the taliban but apparently the thing we have in common is that we hate working at the office um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um the really interesting thing that this report told me though that wasn't highlighted in a lot of reporting on this is that um when the mujahideen were fighting all of their expenses were covered and people would essentially take care of them because it was seen like as their duty what they had to do or um like they because they were fighting a holy war like it was other people's obligation to just kind of care for their needs but now that the war is over now they're moving into like you actually have to work you actually have to earn a salary you have to pay rent like people expect you to provide for the family like the 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 the, the uh, you know overall taliban structure isn't going to provide for your family anymore you have to do that and what's so interesting is, is the report is talking about how many of these young talibs are like now struggling with that they're like struggling with now realizing he's like oh i actually have to be the provider now that was really really interesting to me but um we got a yeah. super chat from secular sakai read this one uh oh thank you for thank the super chat ten dollars super chat thank you thank you yeah saying i remember watching bill maher's bit about this on his show from jihad joe to joe in accounting laughing my ass off. <laughs> um uh oh and then he's asking me p.s did the donation amount display bug get fixed on the ob ren donor box page i'll have to check i had to contact support because i don't know what's going on with that it's something on their side but thank you for checking in with me um, all right, so Hassan is getting depressed because we all, all this talk about office work and he has to now go at a, to, a, to his office soon. Also, D is saying, will they turn into Marx, Marxist <laughs> next? Ah, D! Yeah, workers in it. Yeah. That's so funny. So we have a few, um, I would I really suggest people go um, look up this whole interview by um, Afghanistan Analytics Networks because it was so interesting. Um and um we have some funny comments uh yeah do you say look at what twitter has done is doing to them hashtag say no to modernity <laughs> um read this 
Mustafa oh, yeah. is saying it's it, this is kind of sad because this mentality could only exist for people who fought in a generation long war. Peace is so foreign exactly. to them. A multi generation long war. Yes. Yeah. Like their fathers and their fathers' fathers were fighting in this. Um, D said they are mentally handicapped from dealing with half the population. It's really sad, actually. Exactly. I know this is something that's really foreign to me. Like I once dated someone that grew up in Yemen. And when he talked about when he moved back to the States and he was too scared to look at women because he used to be beaten for looking at women and then coming back to the States where things are so different. Like, obviously that's going to make navigating the world very difficult, but I, I wanted to address something. Oh, shoot. You, you unhighlighted the comment. Basically, um, uh, Pakistani Patriot Force was giving some pushback on us from, yeah, saying, Susanna, it's not funny. F these Taliban. Here's the thing. Humor is one of the best ways in which we can disarm people. It's one of the best ways in which we can disarm people. Because it's you. if, if you can laugh at something, that means you're taking power away from it. That means you're not fearful. You're not so fearful that you cannot laugh in the face of it. Let's be honest. We we can we this, the Taliban can be very scary, but we should not give them so much power because sometimes people like to be scary because then they gain power, right? So what do we do instead? We mock them and we say, you know what, being a being a Talib, it's kind of cringe. Being being in the Taliban, it's kind of cringy, you know. And you know we should we should treat them accordingly. It's cringe. Let's just like, be honest, you know, and it, well, let's just make fun of them. Because then they won't be so powerful that we're just terrified, you know? They deserve to be mocked. That's uh, per perfectly said. Perfectly said. Uh, this is why dark humor is a thing, by the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Especially because sometimes the news is so sad and depressing that a lot of people just avoid consuming it. So you use dark humor as a way to make it easier to swallow. But um, the overall point is that you know it's it's easy to be a jihadi it's easy to be a revolutionary it's not so easy to actually run a functioning government it's easy to tear things down it's not easy to maintain an institution yeah that exactly. requires and real skill that's important to know because a lot of people think like united states was so weak that is defeat was defeated by the taliban but again, you need a power, you know, a thousand times stronger to be able to hold something together. Like, the, like Taliban is now discovering that with, you know, ISIS K, that ISIS K is a lot, lot weaker than the Taliban, but it's still able to cause a lot of headache for the Taliban. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, in okay. the interviews, it also talked about how they were shocked about how easy it was to take Kabul. Because they had never been to Kabul. It's a big city. They were confused by it. They did not know how to navigate it at all. One guy literally said, if they had given us any pushback, it would have taken us weeks. But they oh, literally wow. left before we even got there. I was like, that is, <laughs> I'm like, that is damning. That yeah, is but it, damning. Yeah, ex that's actually a very good um, thing to remember. Because people are like, how could nobody predict that the Taliban took over that fast? Like, Taliban didn't know that, like, if even Taliban was surprised about how they fast they took to uh, Kabul, then what do you expect from everyone else? Nobody expected that, including the people who were... <laughs> Wait, this is funny. Um, oh, look at this. Oh, no, no, this, I thought it was something else. But Sasan is saying, this is the only news show that I watch. Oh, that's well, so sweet. That is sweet, but I don't know if I want to <laughs> encourage that. <laughs> I, I, you should have a diverse um, source of information. So. Yeah, yeah. Please go follow some actual, like, on the ground journalists. <laughs> yeah, because, 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 guys, this is an opinion show. This is not a news, uh, uh, a source of news. Like, we are here to, uh, what you're getting here is reporting of the news with a heavy bias of me and Susanna's opinions, right? So you shouldn't be here to, if you want more objective sources of news, what we recommend is France 24. Uh, we recommend DW. Where else do we recommend DW? Um, I This is controversial, 
And I actually like Al Jazeera English for a lot of coverage, not all coverage, but a lot of coverage. I like Al Jazeera English. This their their show, the stream is usually very good. Yes, yes, but but that's also opinion. Um, if you want completely, if you want to be sure that almost get assured that this is completely objective and no propaganda, not that much propaganda in it, then go with France Twenty Four and DW. I think those are the best sources. Yeah, AP. Yeah. The oh, Gar um, yeah, DSA uh, Associated Press, The Guardian. True. I don't know. The it's Guardian is also has some leanings, right? They have a bias. Uh, it's worse in their opinion pieces. I'm not saying less so in their actual just reporting. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm not saying they're not a good source of information. They're a fantastic source of information. But if you want to be like, I want to make, I want to make sure that there's nothing, no leanings. Like this is like mm -hmm. hard facts. Uh, it's hard to do. AP is good. Uh, France Twenty Four is good, and DW is good. So, yeah. I also really like because I actually have a giant folder in my bookmarks bar because I'm <laughs> always constantly looking for news for this show. Um, specifically for news on Iran, Iran Wire. I love Iran Wire. It's like mm. it's it's the best. Yeah. So, for example, not every you know I get news from un, uh, from bias sources. I, I'm just aware of the bias. For example, Iran Wire is less biased. Iran International is biased, but I prefer Iran International because I'm aware of their bias and I yeah. agree with their bias. Right. So it's okay to be biased as long as you are aware of what the bias is. Right. You know. For example, here. We are biased at the Atheist Republic, but we tell you what our bias is. Our bias is anti-religion, anti-Islam, anti-Christianity. Yeah. We are uh, we are pro-liberalism. So these are our biases, right? Yeah. Al Jazeera English is like fairly unbiased, except when it comes to Palestinian issues. <laughs> but besides that, it's like actually pretty good most of the time. Yeah um what about voice of america voice of america has a heavy bias as well which is okay again we're not we're not trying to shut it down by saying that right some biases are okay like iran international even claims that they're biased like we have their reporters like how could we not be biased we want to be biased so like yeah so you know and get my best-selling book why there is no god for free click on the link for it in the description